Hello, everybody. Today I'm talking about Manasa Nakshatra. Manasa Nakshatra is the 25th Nakshatra from your moon, and it has very important implications about how you think, your mind, and any disturbance that we can feel to the mind as well. Uh, we study the natal position of Manasa Nakshatra and then the transits to Manasa Nakshatra. Uh, this lecture I gave uh, as part of the Royal Nakshatra Summit organized by Kasanti. Uh, the full Royal Summit is available in uh, uh, on Kasanti Nakshatra's uh, YouTube channel. I will put a link to it, but this is my portion of the lecture. So let us explore. Hello, I'm Komila Sutton, and we are talking uh, Manasa Nakshatra. Uh, do remember to subscribe, press the bell notification. This uh, Manasa Nakshatra lecture I gave as part of the uh, Royal Nakshatra Summit, and it was organized by Kasanati. And Kasanati is also organizing the wonderful Parashara Astrology Conference. Uh, from uh, November 17th to 21st. This is an online conference and uh, you can uh, look up the details below. I'm also going to put a link about it uh, in my chat uh, so uh, you can uh, find out information. So this is a wonderful conference with a lot of uh, international uh, honored uh, speakers and I'm going to be giving two lectures there as well. Uh, my two uh, lectures and workshop, the workshop is on Sage Parashara, Secrets of Vimshotari Dasha, and my lecture is on the Dushtana houses, 6th, uh, 8th, and 12th houses. You don't want to miss it. Well, uh, so uh, do try to join us. You can join from wherever you are. Uh, so now on my lecture on Manasa Nakshatra. And welcome everyone to the 2022 Royal Nakshatra Summit. It's such an honor and pleasure and blessing to be here with all. So, um, so we are talking on this uh, Nakshatra Summit today with that. This is me and my website is gomela.com. And I'm actually at a temple here called Mansa Devi. And Mansa Devi is the goddess of the mind. Uh, she's actually uh, the sister of Vasuki. And uh, this, uh, this temple is in Rishikesh. There's one temple, Mansa Devi, also in Chandigarh, where I have a home. Uh, but the Rishikesh temple, you have to climb up. And so she's the goddess uh, that helps us to calm our mind down. And uh, there's a lot of uh, people go there in millions, I would say, to worship. And we are coming up to the... Um, uh, God, you know, the spring Navratri, so the springtime of worship of goddess from 1st of April. So that is very nice. And uh, today being Sunday, I want to honor Lord Surya. I think the Kasanthi did some very nice mantra, Sanjay did. So I'm just adding to that. Uh, and we just do, I'll just do it three times. Om Suryaya Namaha Om Suryaya Namaha Om Suryaya Namaha This photograph is from uh, the uh, place called Swami Malai in uh, Tamil Nadu and this is actually a hotel and it was just wonderful that we as astrologers went there and they had this beautiful uh, Surya. Uh, but nakshatras, I have, have a book on nakshatras. You can look it up anywhere it's available. These are my books that you can have a look at it. So let us get to the topic. And uh, uh, Kasanati, if you can remind me when I'm sort of towards the end of it and uh, so that I don't overrun my 
uh, a lot of time. So as I was talking even with uh, Sam Sadashiva also that, you know, in these uh, summits, we are sowing a seed for you to research further. And obviously we are not able to uh, uh, just talk a lot, but uh, I try to edit my thought process and put all the key points there so that you are uh, understanding. And I feel that of all the nakshatras, the Manasa nakshatra is very important. And Manasa nakshatra is the 25th nakshatra from the moon and the lagna. Uh, Manas means the mind. Uh, gives a deeper understanding and further clues as to how the mind works. Mind can be destructive, therefore this may not be the positive nakshatra. Uh, it needs to be examined carefully. I feel this is a very key aspect for all of you to uh, look at the 25th nakshatra as well. And it is studied from the moon. We know moon represents the mind. But as you think, okay, why not look at the moon nakshatra itself to show the mind? Uh, so just like uh, uh, Sanjay was talking about the uh, Bhamsha chart, the nakshatra Amsha chart that you look at something else, the 25th nakshatra has some extra secret knowledge of how the mind actually works and maybe what are the issues that we bring about our thought process. And the Lagna, I highlighted it because people ask why from the Lagna. Lagna is the analytical mind. Mercury, Jupiter get Digbala and the Lagna showing mind and wisdom are strong. First house is the head where the brain dwells. So therefore, uh, you can look at it from both aspects. And um, uh, so uh, basically the thing with the Manasa Nakshatra, there are two major ways to analyze it. One is in your natal chart. Study the type of nakshatra that rules Manasa, nakshatra, uh, and if there are any planets placed there. Malefic planets will be challenging, can bring anger, anxiety, depression, wrong type of thinking. And remember that Jyotish is highlighting the issues. Uh, they important that if you have a difficult aspect with your Manasa nakshatra, that you're thinking about uh, how to um, improve it, not to just get stuck in that situation. Uh, then Manasa Nakshatra by transit, 25th uh, transit of malefic planets through Manasa Nakshatra is studied. It can be tough on the mind and not our thinking. Uh, Manasa Nakshatra transit uh, in the 25th nakshatra from the moon is the start of Saresati, disturbs the mind and we can make mistakes in thinking. So when you're analyzing Saresati, you must look at uh, Saturn's transit uh, uh, through the uh, 25th nakshatra. Otherwise, you can, you are generally we are looking at transits of the uh, malefics. Benefics are okay. They are calming us down and leading. And also the slower moving planets. You could look at uh, uh, Saturn, uh, Rahu Ketu, Mars. So at present, uh, you know, um, Saturn is transiting in Dhanishta Nakshatra and Rahu is in um, uh, Kritika and um, Ketu is in uh, Vishakha. So you see, you have to look at, uh, uh, count the 25th nakshatra. So just to tell you how to count your 25th nakshatra. Uh, so for example, if your moon is in uh, Bharani nakshatra, uh, you go backwards rather than going forwards to try count 20. So from Bharani, the 25th nakshatra, uh, sorry, 27th nakshatra is Ashwini. 26 nakshatra is uh, Revati and 25th nakshatra is Uttra Bhadrapada. So that means you are counting your uh, uh, 25th um, uh, nakshatras and are uh, uh, easy to count. So they are uh, just by moving backwards. Uh, so there are seven types of thinking uh, reflected by the qualities of the nakshatra ruling Manasa nakshatra 
as the nakshatras are divided into seven groups, uh, actually what happens is that we study these groups mostly in Bahurat and we don't think that they have any impact on us. But nakshatras have some basic qualities that are studied. Uh, each nakshatra can have positive, negative qualities as well. Uh, we must learn to develop them in a constructive way. I think this is really uh, the main thing that I'm always uh, encouraging, uh, that we should not think that if something is difficult, it is going to remain difficult. Everything has a positive way to use it. And when you see the uh, charts of the great swamis, uh, you see that they also have sometimes very difficult manasa nakshatra. But by doing the correct uh, spiritual procedures and le leading the correct type of life, then that energy is used in a totally different way. So this is what you have to think about it. So these thinking that they are fixed nakshatras, Uttra Palguni, Uttra Shada, Uttra Bhadrapada, Rohini. Uh, Sthira nakshatras being Manasa can give steady thinking, gives calmness and equilibrium. However, the negative part of it is due to influence of malefics in Manasa, this can make one stubborn, block to expand. Without even influence also, fixed nakshatras can be very uh, stubborn. This is what I think. Nobody can change my thinking. And of course, if malefics are added to it, it will add further essence. Uh, then Charchara, movable nakshatras, Swati, Punarvasu, Shravana, Dhanishta, Shatabhishak, always thinking what to do next, planning, mentally active, uh, negative, uh, living in the future, worrying you're not doing enough, overdoing things. I think Charchara is a major modern day problem, is overdoing too much. So uh, we have to be conscious of that, that we are not overdoing things. Then Ugra Kruda, these are aggressive and cruel nakshatras. Uh, Purva Palguni, Purva Ashada, Purva Bhadrapada, Bharani Magha. Aggressive thinking, impulsive, quick to anger, frustration, selfish. But you can also have a positive influence either due to benefic influence or benefic use of this energy is to ability to control those impulses, to understand that this is sometimes your weakness and therefore uh, let me do it in the right way. Let me try to manage it. So I feel that is a very important factor there. Uh, Mishra Sadharan, mixed ordinary, uh, Vishakha Kritika, uh, mixed nature can be angry, calm, usually positive, negative thinking, both, you know, that uh, we need to study the influence of the nakshatra and its ruler. Now, you can also study further, which I didn't put it in here, the how the ruler of the nakshatra is doing in your chart as well, to, uh, of the manasa nakshatra is doing, to kind of understand a little bit more. Uh, then, uh, Shipra Laghu, short and dynamic, Hasta, Ashwini, Pushya, Abhijit, dynamic thinking, always making positive decisions, uh, will usually show good ideas and thoughts. Whereas if you have negative influence, you can sometimes not trust yourself. Uh, sometimes it shows a block of ideas uh, or, uh, you know, thinking about wrong type of ideas uh, as this is a, a nakshatra which is very dynamic in thinking. Then Mridu Metra nakshatras, soft and friendly. Now these are actually the description of the nakshatras. Mridu is soft and friendly is Metra. Mrigasira Revati Chitra Anuradha, soft and friendly in nature, soft, kind, mind is calm. Negative due to influences, too soft, too emotional, too scared, uh, unsettled mind, you know. Uh, and uh, then Tikshana, Daruna, sharp and challenging, Mula, Jaishta, Ardhara, Ashlesha. This show sharp thinking, always challenging yourself, feeling dissatisfied, destructive, angry, uh, positive due to Benefic influence, transformative, fearless, deep thinking connected to spiritual aspects. Actually, any of these nakshatras, if you are using that energy properly, 
you are not getting into the challenging aspects of it, but you are going more into uh, transformative energy. So they give you that ability to uh, work with that. Uh, so here I have Swami Shivananda's chart. And so the two things to uh, look at his chart is that he has uh, two very complicated nakshatras. And Swami Shivananda, if you don't know, he was one of the great gurus of India. Uh, uh, he uh, has an ashram in Rishikesh. He has written hundreds of books, thousands of leaflets, lectures, talks, everything's available free to download. If you look at Swami Shivananda, this is not the ashram here in USA and everywhere. That is uh, uh, created by one of his students in his guru's name. Uh, but this is Swami Shivananda, a uh, great personality. And you can see right away some uh, problems here in his chart, but that's not the life he led. Uh, Saturn, Mars, Rahu, and in the ascendant, Lagna, that could be quite destructive anyway. Uh, but we are not go studying his chart there. But you see the Lagna is Cancer and the moon, uh, 23 degrees, 39. Uh, that is Ashlesha Nakshatra. And the moon is Bharani. So both these uh, Lagna Nakshatra and moon Nakshatra, they are fierce Nakshatras. Uh, and uh, so I made the uh, list for him that his moon is in Bharani, but his Manasa is Uttara Bhadra, uh, which is a Sthira Nakshatra. Uh, so Sthira is fixed that the uh, moon is giving that um, uh, quality, strong quality to him and, uh, uh, you know, uh, consistent, regular, doing things that are there. And then Ashlesha Nakshatra, uh, he, his Lagna is in Ashlesha and Manasa is Ardhara. So this is kind of interesting that both Ashlesha and Ardhara fierce Nakshatras and Daruna Tikshina. However, uh, you know, Ardhara uh, can also destroy ignorance. It can destroy negativity. Uh, it, it can... Um, have anger issues because Ardhara is quite angry if you have Ardhara as a Manasa Nakshatra. But as a Swami, as somebody totally immersed in a spiritual lifestyle, then these things were not bothering him as much as it would bother somebody who has to live in the world, corporate world, daily life. You know, then they need to do those extra bits to support themselves. And in contrast, uh, you know, Sorry, so Swami Shivananda, despite having challenging nakshatras, he purified through path of yoga, devotion to helping others, karma yoga. That was his life, you know. He was a doctor. Uh, he was treating people all the time. Uh, he was looking after. He was doing selfless service. Uh, path of yoga is not just doing the asana practice, not just doing way more. He channeled his fierceness to the right direction. So, you know, fierceness is not negative. It's just if you channel it in the wrong direction, that is the problem. And when Swamiji died, uh, all the president, the prime minister of India, they all came to, uh, you know, they all used to visit him before as well, but they came, there was a stamp issued in his name. He was a big honor, honored person in the 60s when he passed away. Uh, so now we have the Manasa Nakshatra of somebody with more difficult issues. Uh, this is the chart of Bill Cosby. I forgot to put his birth data here. Uh, but here, what you can see is uh, his moon is in uh, Purva Palguni Nakshatra. So remember, of the Nakshatras, Purva Palguni itself is also uh, fierce. And if we count backwards from Purva Palguni, the 27th Nakshatra will be uh, Magha, uh, 26th will be Ashlesha, 25th will be uh, Pushya. Uh, from his lagna, his lagna is Revati. So you count backwards, 27th from Revati will be um, Uttra Bhadrapada, 26th will be um, Pushya, sorry, 26th, not Pushya, sorry, Purva Bhadrapada and um, uh, 26th, uh, sorry, I've got it wrong. Uh, 
Uttra Bhadra, Purva Bhadra, and Shata Bhisha. So, uh, uh, so Bill Cosby, uh, both positive nakshatras showing high thinking, yet does not seem to be way his thought process was used. Um, uh, so uh, here we have Moon Purva Palguni, uh, Pusha Nakshatra, Shipa Laghu. And Lagna is Revati, Shatabhishak, which is Chara. However, Shatabhishak is a thousand, uh, uh, a th uh, thousand healers, thousand demons. So uh, sometimes the demonic personality is possible if you allow those thoughts process to go. And uh, Bill Cosby was convicted and spent years in prison. Then he's been released now again. Uh, but, uh, you know, there obviously there are some issues there that we can think about uh, his thought process, his manasa nakshatra that is difficult. Uh, so the lagna manasa is shatabhishak, which is charchara active. Rahu is the Lord and is debilitated in Scorpio. Scorpio may have emphasized sexuality in his mind and created dissatisfaction. Also, Rahu is always wanting more and more. So that dissatisfaction in that area of life. So let's just look at his chart that um, from the Lagna, um, uh, Rahu is the lord of the Shatab. And Rahu is not just um, uh, debilitated. It's in the ninth house, which is called uh, Marana Karakasthana. It's a, a very difficult position for Rahu where you get the wrong advice and the wrong thinking, uh, uh, wrong guidance. So uh, whether you think that uh, gurus were guiding him or his own inner guidance and then Rahu being the lord of the Manasa from the Lagna. And uh, from the moon, uh, his uh, Manasa is uh, Pusha. Lord Saturn is in the Lagna. It's an eighth from the uh, from the Lagna. Sorry, not uh, uh, Saturn is in the Lagna. Eighth from the moon, uh, and um, eighth house is a secret weakness and connected to sexuality. Uh, Ketu uh, transit was exact on Saturn in July 2015 when uh, sexual allegations resurfaced. These sexual allegations were always following him around. And here we see again that from the moon, Saturn is in the eighth house. An eighth house position from the moon, but Saturn in the Lagna is also a Marana Karaka Sthana. These Marana Karaka Sthanas are very interesting and maybe separate aspect of study. But here we see that the both the lords of his nakshatras, Manasa nakshatras are in Marana Karaka Sthana. Now that means they are in a serious dysfunctional state. Uh, and of course, you know, one of the worst things you can have is celebrity. Because in celebrity, uh, you know, you get all people just appreciating you all the time and saying, oh, you're wonderful, you're great, you're fabulous. And uh, it is very easy to start believing your publicity that I'm so great and I can do anything and I can get away with it. So you see that in um, actually Swami Shivananda, apparently people praised him too much. He used to be very upset because he didn't like it. Uh, he said, I, I'm uh, a servant. I'm going to do the right thing. Whereas, you know, fame, celebrity, such as great success. And there are many things in the chart that give success as well. Uh, and, uh, but the, we are talking about Manasa Nakshatra for Bill Cosby. So you can see that both the Lords, uh, uh, Rahu is debilitated. Uh, Saturn is eighth from the moon and it is also, um, you know, both of them are in Marana Karakasthana. That means my reading of Marana Karakasthana is that when pan planets are placed there, they get stuck in a way, you know, that you are not able to uh, do anything about them. So that is where uh, some guidance, right kind of guidance uh, uh, and you have to first want to have that, you know, to be dealing with that. Uh, so then the last aspect of today's class, I want to talk about transit to Manasa Nakshatra. Uh, so when you're having 
uh, transit to Manasa Nakshatra, this can give uh, stress and worry. Uh, so right now, uh, you know, Manasa Nakshatra transits uh, for Saturn. Saturn is in uh, Dhanishta. Uh, so he's uh, Manasa for uh, Uttra Bhadrapada. So if your moon or ascendant is in Uttra Bhadrapada, then Saturn is transiting uh, the Manasa Nakshatra. If you take for Rahu, uh, Rahu's Manasa for Rahu is in Kritika, so he's Manasa for Ardhara Nakshatra. Uh, so uh, if you have got moon or ascendant in Ardhara, then Rahu is creating anxiety and worry. Uh, Ketu is in Vishakha. And uh, Vishakha is Manasa, I think, for Mula Nakshatra. Let me go backwards. Yes, uh, for Mula Nakshatra. Uh, so that means that uh, if you are having the transits, and especially for Rahu Ketu, also look at where the eclipses are falling. The transit of Saturn to 25th from the moon is the start of Saresati. Uh, what happens is that when uh, Saturn goes into the 25th nakshatra from the moon, your mind starts becoming restless. It becomes agitated. It starts thinking, oh, life is not okay. I should be doing something. I'm very unhappy. And it is the time where you have to be most cautious because that is the time where you can make mistakes. You can change your home, change your jobs, make yourself insecure, uh, create problems for yourself because the mind is troubled. So if you focus on that, so uh, then that is important. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, that knowledge is uh, key as well. So we look at a chart here of Bill Gates. Now, Bill Gates has a, 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 a multiple problem issue in his chart. Uh, firstly, that uh, you see that he's Gemini Lagna and Saturn in Capricorn means it's Ashtama Shani, eighth transit from Saturn. And, uh, you know, uh, his exact 22 degrees 59 of um, uh, Capricorn, that would be the exact degree. Now, uh, during the eighth house transit of uh, Saturn, uh, he has divorced. Uh, he has uh, you know, been implicated, not implicated, but uh, his relationship with uh, Jeffrey Epstein, the, uh, you know, the uh, big sexual predator who uh, died in prison uh, has been revealed and it has spoiled his reputation. But, uh, you know, Dhanishta also is there in uh, his moon is uh, Uttra Bhadra Pada. So right now, uh, Saturn has moved into Dhanishta. That means right now is a very vulnerable time for uh, Bill Gates because 8th house Saturn and uh, Manasa Nakshatra transit. Now, what you see in Bill Gates chart is that if you are planning Sare Sati, you would think, oh yeah, uh, Saturn going in Aquarius is the start of Sare Sati. Uh, and uh, then going into Aries is the end. But this uh, starting point, uh, if you look at the Nakshatra divisions, I've written about it in my book as well on Nakshatras and you can study it more. But if you look at this aspect here, that uh, uh, at this stage, uh, it's uh, extreme vulnerability. And if he were advising from me, I would have said to him, uh, be very cautious and careful and, uh, you know, not to make any uh, unnecessary mistakes. But, you know, he's had to give a big alimony and then the reputation and, you know, all that thing, it's not money it, itself. It is other things that are there. Uh, so the Manasa transit is very important, especially with the Sare Sati, which is the 25th from the moon. Uh, so Bill Gates, moon in Uttarabhadra, Manasa Nakshatra is Dhanishta. Uh, 
So, you know, Dhanishtha Nakshatra is a thinker, ideas, wealthy in mind. He may be thinking wealth all the time. And Saturn throughout 2022 is in Dhanishtha. He goes into Shatabhishak in early, uh, uh, sometimes in, um, I think, sometime in the beginning of 23. Maybe it's March because it has to go six degrees, 40. Uh, so this is a very crucial time for him. Uh, so uh, uh, thank you very much. So yes, so uh, the main thing is uh, that we must think about remedies because without remedies, uh, it's, uh, you know, you need to uh, think about what to do with the uh, difficult transits, difficult issues in the chart. So yogic disciplines, I think those are most important. Uh, it's a whole process that you can um, develop over time and going to some uh, good, um, uh, you know, ashrams or good areas. Nowadays, everything is online. So there's no excuse to uh, listen to some yogic philosophy, some ideas, thinking. Then mantra chanting. Uh, Kasanati did beautiful mantra chanting, starting uh, positive thinking. I know at the Shivananda Swami Sita, she does classes online on positive thinking. You may be able to download as well. There may be other teachers doing it as well. Then developing the six wealths instead of six obstacles, six enemies of mankind. They are connected to our sixth house. Uh, this is a um, technique that is part of sadhana chatushtaya. Uh, so, uh, you know, number of kind of important aspects to do. And then some things that you can do yourself and uh, think about what you can do is lifestyle choices. You know, keep your lifestyle simple. Don't complicate it. Uh, I have a favorite word and I say edit your life. At, at least you have to have some time thinking what is superfluous, what doesn't matter, uh, what are the products you don't need, simplify your life. Then regular habits, eating, sleeping, have some kind of routine because <clears throat> be like the sun. The sun has a sunrise, a midday, a sunset, Next year, this date, sun will be exactly in the same position. So we should follow the sun a bit, but regularize our habits. I'm not expecting everybody to suddenly become perfect, but this is important. Uh, pay special attention to diet. I think diet and moon are interlinked. So natural, seasonal, not too spicy food, uh, plant-based as much as possible. Uh, avoid chopping and changing your life. Uh, home, career, you know, be careful about, uh, uh, you know, not all the time uh, wanting excitement from life. I know sometimes a little bit excitement is good, but the, all these things affect the mind and will aggravate that mana supposition for you. And travel wisely, which I mean is that you want to, these days, of course, we are all not traveling a lot. Uh, at least uh, I'm a big traveler myself, but, uh, uh, you know, go important events, things, uh, don't be all the time traveling so that you are not necessarily um, uh, doing the best for yourself. So thank you very much. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak to all of you. And here I am with uh, Sage Agastya. <laughs> this is at one of the uh, temples on uh, Muruga temple, beautiful, uh, you know, very profound sage Akastya. So I want to thank you and thank you, Kasanati, for inviting me here. Thank you for watching uh, this lecture and uh, more to come. I'm always sharing the lectures I do online as well for other organizations as well as my own. Uh, so do remember to subscribe, press the bell notification. Thanks.